Fair warning, if your wife's boyfriend is currently in the other room, this video may offend you. You may encounter some information that goes directly against the one true narrative. We've heard for months, actually more than a year, Elon Musk is destroying Tesla's brand. Shut up, Elon. Stop having opinions. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Of course. It's always coming from very small brain dimwits who live in thought bubbles who are too dumb to realize they live in thought bubbles. But we have heard this narrative. So I just wanted to issue a trigger alert. If you happen to be somebody right now who's currently preparing a post-coital meal for your wife and her boyfriend, and they're just about done, you probably don't want to encounter this information because it will completely upend your worldview, which is Elon bad and Elon having opinions bad and Elon buying X bad and Elon destroying Tesla brand. This guy, Sean Strickland, MMA fighter, mentally unstable, sometimes, completely unhinged, but also always willing to speak his mind. So let me tell you about Tesla. I bought my Tesla when Elon Musk bought X. It is the most American-made car. Elon brought freedom to the internet. Before, before, before Elon bought X, we were stuck with Instagram. Instagram, you guys. You know how shitty Instagram is? I can't even post on fucking Instagram without getting shadow banned. So you know what I said, Elon? You did me a solid. You brought me back to the X. You don't flag me. I'm going to buy me a Tesla. You guys, I love it. It's a poor man's sports car. 35K after a tax credit, you guys. Zero to 60 in three seconds. Sign me up, my man. So let me. So I just wanted to remind folks, as I've been saying, for every one extremely loud but hurt baby, basically residents of California living in a thought bubble, you think Elon's destroying Tesla's bit. You have many other people, like Sean, who see must take a. Arrow, or well, quite a few arrows actually, for humanity. Buy X, $44 billion down the drain. Why? To allow people to freely share their thoughts, opinions, and ideas. And people whose values align quite strongly with a freedom think, wow, this motherfucker actually cares about freedom. And he's putting his money where his mouth is. I might support the guy. I might support the company. In fact, not only will I support the company, but I, unprompted, during an interview, will randomly go off on a tangent talking about Tesla Talking about why I bought a Tesla, specifically Musk standing up for free speech, and not only that, but I'm also basically going to do a fucking advertisement for them, unpaid, and tell you the performance of the vehicle and the price after tax incentives, because that's how much I want to convince you guys. Their product's amazing, and you should support them, because the owner of the company gives a fuck about your freedoms. Of course, most of the hate stream media leans heavily to the left, so you don't hear this narrative. You only hear, it's not bad, it's not destroying Tesla. But remember, for everyone moron, living in a thought bubble, thinking Elon's destroying Tesla's brand. There's a bunch of Sean Stricklands out there who previously had a neutral or possibly even negative opinion of Musk and Tesla. I mean, look, let's just be honest here, right? Sean Strickland is a kind of guy that would, let's just be honest, right? Total redneck. I strongly suspect, historically, you'll probably be able to find comments of Sean Strickland suggesting that people who drive electric vehicles also fuck men. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying this is the kind of stuff you'd hear from somebody like Sean. Yet, suddenly, he's out here doing an unpaid advertisement for Tesla. Why? Because Musk stood up for free speech and put his money where his mouth is. You won't hear that in the media, but this is the reality. And from a UFC fighter to a big UFC fan, Orange Man Bad, explaining in more detail Elon Musk's future involvement in a government efficiency commission slash the Department of Government Efficiency. Who knows what it's going to be called? The only way they'll get rid of that tariff is if you build the plant in the United States, not if you build it in Mexico. Which is what China and others do. If Elon wants to sell a car, by the way, Elon Musk gave his total endorsement. Elon, he gave me that greatest, beautiful, most beautiful. He said, we're not going to have a country left if Trump doesn't get it. And you know what I'm going to let Elon do? Unless you people disagree, I'm going to get Elon, and he's great at this. He's going to be our cost cutter. I think he can save trillions, right? He wants to do it so badly. Now, listen to the response from the crowd. People are cheering. The name Musk is mentioned. No booze. Orange Man Bad explaining that Musk is going to head a massive, massive effort to reduce government waste. People are happy about this. Trump has recognized that Elon's serious about this, and he has the experience and ability to pull it off. And the people in this audience here, I believe at an auto plant, I think those are sheets of metal for stamping behind, are completely on board. Historically, remember, Republicans equals electric vehicles are bad, uh, electric vehicles don't work. Uh, yeah, huge amount of respect for Musk. So much so from the leading Republican candidate that he's going to put him in charge of the Government Efficiency Commission. And a quick side note, 
I discussed previously why a Trump administration would be incredible for Tesla. Some people agreed. A lot of very emotional people tried to explain in the comments, Trump thinks electric vehicles are bad, therefore that's terrible. You're so dumb. But, it, you know, it's hard to argue with somebody when there's many, many standard deviations between us. It's just, what's the point? But Trump at the beginning of this was actually discussing his proposed corporate tax decrease from 21% to 15% for companies manufacturing products in the United States. Does Tesla manufacture products in the United States? Oh, they do. Hmm. Are they going to be manufacturing many, many, many millions, then tens of millions of products in the United States? Vehicles and robots? Yes. Well, isn't that interesting? Tesla's corporate tax rate under a Trump administration, due to his heavy desire to incentivize US manufacturing and create jobs and have products built in the US, could fall from 21% to 15%. That certainly can't hurt Tesla, who already intend on producing many tens of millions of products in the United States in the coming years. I don't think I can get him full time because he's a little bit busy sending rockets up and all the things he does. But, but he's so much into that. He said the waste of this country is crazy and we're going to get Elon Musk to be our cost cutter. He's going to do it for zero. He doesn't want anything. But he wants to see this, com this country be great and he'll do it. And having his endorsement is a great endorsement. We have some really great endorsements, I will tell you that, but we'll get him involved and mostly on that side of it. And it's going to be incredible what he'll be able to do without hurting anybody or just waste. It's waste, fraud and abuse. Do you ever hear the expression waste, fraud and abuse? You get rid of that. Everybody lives much better. We have a country that's really strong again. The dude ain't wrong. I mean, we've got a great case study too. Musk buys Twitter shit cans about 80% of the waste, fraud, and abuse within the company. And suddenly, with a fraction of the headcount, the product dramatically improves in the following 18 plus months. And if you thought Twitter under previous ownership was wasteful, bro, the United States government, in fact, just about every government globally, is on a whole other level. And of course, this is going to make Elon Musk public enemy number one, if he wasn't already. Continuing with this topic, I thought I'd share this clip to wrap today's video up from the Lex Friedman podcast, with Vivek Ramaswamy, we're discussing his conversations with Elon Musk around this very thing. So given this conversation, uh, what do you think of Elon's proposal of the Department of Government Efficiency in, in the uh, Trump administration or really any administration? Well, I'm, I'm uh, of course, biased because Elon and I have discussed that for the better part of the last year and a half. And so I think it's a great idea. <laughs> it's something that's very consistent with the core premise of my presidential candidacy. I got to know him as I was running for U.S. president in a couple of events that he came to, and then we built a friendship after that. So obviously, I think it's a great idea. Who do you think is more hardcore on the cutting, you or Elon? Well, I think uh, Elon is Elon's pretty hardcore. Um, is, I, I said 75% of the federal bureaucrats, and while I was running for president, he said, you need to put at least 75%. So, so I agree with him. I think I would... Uh, I think it'd be a fun competition to see who ends up who ends up more hardcore. I think he and I, I don't think there's someone out there who's going to be more hardcore than here I would be. And the reason is, I think we're both, we share in common a willingness to take the risk and see what happens. I mean, the sun will still rise in the east and set in the west. That much I guarantee you. Is there going to be some broken glass and some damage? Yes, there is. There's no way around that. But once you're willing to take that risk, then it doesn't become so scary anymore. And, and here's the thing, Lex. It's, it's, so it's easy to say this. Let's talk about where the rubber hits the road here. E even in even in second Trump term, this would be, you know, the discussion. Uh, President Trump and I have had this conversation, but I think we would continue to have this conversation is where does it rank on our prioritization list? Because there's always going to be a trade-off. If you have a different policy objective that you want to achieve, a good policy objective, whatever that is, right? You could talk about immigration policy, you could talk about economic policy, there are other policy objectives. You're going to trade off a little bit in the short run the effectiveness of your ability to carry out that policy goal if you're also committed to actually thinning out the federal government by 75%, because there's just going to be some clunkiness, right? I mean, there's just going to be frictional costs for that level of cut. So the question is, where does that rank on your prioritization list? To pull that off, to pull off a 75% reduction in the size and scale of the federal government, the regulatory state, and the headcount, I think that only happens if that's your top priority. You can do it at a smaller scale, but at that scale, it only happens if that's your top priority, because then as president, you're in a position to say, I know in the super short run, that might even make it a little bit harder for me to do this other thing that I want to do and use the regulatory state to do it. But I'm going to pass on that 
I'm going to pass that up. I'm going to bear that hardship and inconvenience because I know this other goal is more important on the scale of decades and centuries for the country. So it's a question of prioritization. And, and certainly my own view is that now is a moment where that needs to be a top priority for saving this country. He's nailed it here in terms of Musk being even more hardcore and cost cutting and the importance of doing this. I mean, I'm sure most people watching this know how horrendous the financials of the United States are. The insane government spending, the proportion of the annual budget just going to interest rate payments on debt. The US is currently eating itself to death. Something needs to change. Of course, all of those within the United States government who know their job is completely useless, a net drag, all of those engaging in various forms of fraud and abuse and waste, those with their snouts in the trough, incredible levels of corruption, the revolving doors between government, pharmaceutical industry, the war machine, all the back scratching that's been going on. There will be many people who see Musk as a very serious threat to their ability to continue to pillage, waste, and engage in these acts of fraud, corruption, and abuse. And of course, Musk is no fool. He'll know this. But boy, oh boy, if you thought the attacks, the vitriol, the lies about Musk, if you thought that they'd start to simmer down a little bit after the election, bro, you got another thing coming. In other words, there are likely to be some very loud crying sausage wallets screaming about Elon Musk and the Government Efficiency Commission under a Trump presidency. However, on the other side of that very same coin, think about all of those who are concerned about the US government bloat, waste, inefficiency, who at this point in time have a neutral or even negative opinion of Elon bad, because that's what they heard, who potentially see some positive results, reduction in inflation, huge cost savings, a better use of their tax dollars. How many of those people may see Musk willingly taking arrows to the long-term benefit of the United States, who begin to form a positive opinion of the man, and much like Sean Strickland, care so much about certain values and principles that they become ardent, fervent supporters of Tesla. Tesla customers, the next four years are going to be very interesting, to put it lightly. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking 
game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously. Try Athletic Greens. You won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.